Hi, this is Chef David Ash, and on behalf of Zinc and all of Wellbuilt, we'd like to thank you for your purchase of your Mary Chef oven. This video is designed to familiarize you with your Mary Chef oven. So let's get started. If this is your first time operating the Mary Chef oven, please check the inside of the oven to make for sure that all materials have been removed before operation. Now that you've verified that nothing is inside the oven, feel free to turn your Mary Chef on, simply by pressing the on switch. When you first turn on the oven, it is not necessary to press anything on the screen. Once the temperatures pop up, you may now select your operating temperature. Once the operating temperature has been selected, you can see the current temperature of the oven, your desired temperature. Only when desired temperature is reached will you be able to operate the oven. Now that the unit is preheated, your home screen pops up. Here are the icons. You have manual cooking, you have press and go, you have the recipe book, cleaning, and the settings button. Let's go to manual cooking. By selecting the chef's hat, this will take us into the manual cooking mode. You simply see your operating temperature above, which we don't want to change. The items we do want to change is time, fan speed, and microwave. If you want to add time, simply press the icon, type in your desired time, remember you're entering seconds, add another zero, and now you're in minutes. Hit the green check, and you can see that the minutes has been displayed. If you'd like to change your fan speed, simply touch the icon, and whatever number you type in will be the number that it changes to. Notice how we've changed our fan speed to 75%. Now let's do our microwave. Let's type in our percentage of microwave and you can see we are now ready to execute a manual recipe. We're at 500 degrees for three minutes, at 75% fan, 50% microwave. And if you hit the green check, it's gonna show you that stage and all of its function. And if we found out that this is exactly how we want to save it, simply tap the icon in the lower right hand corner and type in whatever you'd like that item to be. So let's put in test. By hitting the green check, that recipe is now stored into our cookbook. It automatically goes back to the manual cooking page so you're ready to enter your next recipe. Let's go to our recipe book. By selecting the recipe icon, the first thing that will pop up is all of your groups. As you can see, we have some of our groups already preloaded. We have AM, PM, apps, desserts, but feel free to change these so that the navigation makes sense for you. You can change these at any time simply by pressing the edit button. Please keep in mind, whenever this icon pops up, this will always be your edit button. From the same page, you can access all of your recipes. That icon is located here in the upper right-hand corner. So here we have all of our recipes. You can see that we have our photos already uploaded with the products that we have tested. I also want you to see this item right here that has the red box around it. That lets us know that that recipe is not designed for our current running temperature. If I try to execute that product, it will tell me invalid temperature for this recipe. It shows the current temperature and the recipe temperature required to execute that product. Let's edit a recipe. To edit a recipe, go back to our Edit button. You can see a list of all recipes on the left-hand side. The one that we've already created, the test, we simply select it, we hit the icon that has a pencil over a piece of paper, and we can now edit an existing recipe. So if we want to change our settings, let's take it from three minutes down to one minute, we hit the green check again, verify those are the settings that we want, select the save button, we don't want to change the name, let's say we want to add a picture to it. We'll go ahead and put a picture of a pizza on there, 
hit the green check button, and now you can see we've added a photo to it, and we've changed our setting. So now it's time to delete a recipe. I encourage if you have a bunch of recipes already preloaded from the factory that you will never use, feel free to go into all your recipes and delete them, just so you can condense and make for sure that your recipe book is more precise. So we're gonna go ahead and delete our test recipe that we made. Remember, not using the edit key, but you can see a piece of paper with a trash can next to it. If we select this, it's going to ask us so we don't accidentally delete a product, but you can see here, are we sure we want to delete it? No, we want to keep it. We're going to go ahead and select delete, and you can see that our test product has been removed. No matter where you are in the Mary Chef, there will always be a back button in the lower left-hand corner. You can continue to press the back button, and eventually it will take you back to your home screen. Let's go into settings. Settings is password protected. When prompted, all you need to do is type in manager, all uppercase, and you can see a different set of icons pops up. Okay, before we proceed, I want you to take out your camera phone and take a photo of this right here. It is important if you want to leave the manual cooking unlocked that you have just full serve mode checked and show all recipes checked. If any of these buttons are pressed, your entire layout on the Mary Chef will be different. The globe is for language. If you wish for it to remain in English, no step is necessary. The thermometer icon is the temperatures that will pop up when the oven is first turned on, what we currently refer to as our operating temperatures. So you can see I have 500 degrees, 350 degrees, and I have just a standard microwave button as well. So if I wanted to add or change one, I simply select and whatever I type in, let's pick 425 degrees. Once I hit the green check, now when I turn on the oven, I will get an option for 500 degrees, 350 degrees, or 425. If you wish the oven to preheat to the temperature without selecting one, simply go back to the ones that you don't want to use and disable them. If you only have one temperature visible, there is no need to select a temperature when the oven is turned on. The service key is password protected and we are not going to use that. The next icon over to our right is our logbook. It looks like a simple clipboard. From here, we can see how many times each recipe has been used. So you can simply scroll through this every day, every week, however it works best for you to log it. Once you've written down all of your recipes, you can simply select one, hit the trash can, and it will zero out the value. If you'd like to update the time and date of your oven, select this icon. You can see the month, the day, and we're gonna go ahead and change the year. You can select the time and the current day. Always save your settings. Here is where we control all audible functions. Our first icon is the volume. How loud do you want the oven to be? The second icon is our tones. The third icon you can see has to do with touching the screen. I currently have mine turned off so it doesn't beep every time I touch the screen. The only audible alarm is when the door is left open or the product is ready to be removed. Our next icon, we can select by daytime the different temperatures we want to operate at. So for instance, if you wanted to bake cookies off first thing in the morning at 350 degrees, you can have it start at 6 a.m at 350 degrees, and then if you want the unit to change from 350 degrees to 500 degrees, automatically you simply put in another time and another temperature. And without anybody touching a button, the unit will automatically go from 350 degrees to 500 degrees depending on the time of day. Here's the USB icon. From the USB icon, we can update our firmware, 
we can load recipes from our USB or we can upload from the oven to the USB. Your USB access point is located behind this window. Now that we've created a recipe, saved it to our cookbook, we can now put them into our press and go. We often refer to the press and go as just like your favorite radio stations in your car. They're pre-programmed. These are recipes that you're gonna use on a daily or regular basis. If you hit the edit key, you can see two columns of products. On the left, you will see the items that are currently in the press and go. On the right is all of the recipes that are currently in the Mary Chef file. You can drop or add products as you see fit. By selecting the back button, you can see the product that was removed and you can see the product that was added. When it's time to clean your oven, you press the icon with the hand holding the bar of soap. It's going to prompt you to place a tray of ice inside the oven. Remember that pan that came inside your oven when it first arrived? That's your ice pan. You can use ice from the bin, but what we recommend is that you fill it up full of water and put it in the freezer overnight. This will freeze the water solid and will accelerate your cool down. Now that the unit has cooled down, you may now remove the cook plate from the cavity and begin cleaning. Please remember to only use Mary Chef approved chemicals while doing so. A quick tip, when cleaning the oven, on the inside of the door you can see this rubber gasket here. What we don't want to do is have any chemical dry on the surface of that rubber. So what I normally do is I'll just take two towels and wrap them around the rubber gasket to protect it. Spray your Mary Chef approved chemicals along the side and the bottom of the cavity and feel free to scrub using any kind of scrubber that doesn't have metal on the inside of it. What you don't want to do is spray chemical along the fan shroud in the back because that can actually push grease into the catalyst. To remove the air filter, simply lower the guard and the air filter comes out very easily. In any new buildings or remodels where there's a lot of dust, you'll be able to tell. Once the filter is clean, you can put it back into place, raise the guard, hit the green check, and the unit will shut down. One of my favorite accessories for the E2S and the E4S is the grooved griddle plate. You'll see in the video of the grilled cheese sandwich how the grill marks appear on the bread. If you want any sandwich to give the panini look or a grilled look to any product, this grooved griddle plate is for you. Another accessory is the paddle with sides. As you can see with this paddle, as compared to a standard paddle, when product is placed on this paddle, it will catch, as opposed to if somebody's moving throughout the kitchen, it could potentially slide off. So this paddle with sides helps reinforce either side of the Teflon basket. It also has a built-in protector for your hands. Here we have a couple different variations of baskets that can be used inside the Mary Chef. You can see we have some of the smaller solid baskets, we have a larger solid basket, and we also have a wire basket style as well. Personally, I prefer the solid basket because it helps keep the oven cleaner. 
you can see here in the wire basket style that any kind of cheese that comes off of a product or anything that may drip off the side can easily become entangled into the web itself. Another accessory that's available only on the E2S is the accessory rail. Most ovens come with a flat top. With the E2S we have a raised rail so that you can keep pans or you can keep baskets on top of the oven. Here are some quick do's and don'ts for your Mary Chef oven. Do feel free to use your cook plate just like a griddle. I tell everybody this, if you want it to look like this all the time, take a photo of it from day one. Once it's in there, it starts cooking and it's sitting inside of a 500 degree oven, it will discolor slightly. As you can see, mine is seasoned. Now obviously if there were pieces of cheese or pepperoni or product that has fallen off and baked on, please feel free to remove and scrub it at the end of the day. Do feel free to use parchment paper on top of the griddle plate if you'd like to keep it cleaner. Do feel free to use a dry towel or a sanitizing wipe on your solid basket and go right back into the oven. It is not necessary to scrub these or soak them in the sink with any harsh chemical. Do use ceramic dishes to bake in whether you're doing dips or sides. Ceramic is a fantastic vessel to use inside of the Mary Chef. Don't, I repeat, don't put aluminum foil inside the Mary Chef. Don't put the air filter back wet. The incoming air will be pulling any moisture into the electronics of the oven. Don't cook raw proteins inside of the Mary Chef oven. Don't use wax paper inside the Mary Chef. If you need any additional help or training, please contact your local Mary Chef representative.